Um, hello, um, I'm Jessica. I'm head of data at Neuromed. I have a master's degree in information systems with application of AI in health. Um, and today I'm going to talk about using NLP to extract medical records and identify patients with abnormalities. So first, talking a little bit of what we do at Neuromed, that is a Brazilian health tech. Uh, we start the company analyzing and classify checks, x-rays, exams, because one of our founders is a radiologist. radiologist. But especially in the pandemic, we realized that only analyzing Im images and uh, exams were not enough to bring uh, help uh, to the health systems. So we, we start uh, analyzing a lot of all types of data together. Uh, X-rays, obviously, ECGs, uh, laboratory exams, medical records, and um, medical reports, that is the fo focus today. Uh, this is our solution for x-rays. So we show the image, the pathologies we identify and the localization. And this is our solution for another product that emerged with this analysis. So here we show the pathologies of the, uh, the patient diabetics, hypertension, and so on, and why we classified this patient uh, with this abnormality, what we found in the EHR to say that this patient has such uh, alteration. Uh, so this is the focus today of the talk. The object of the project was using medical records and to extract valuable information about the patients so we extract uh, family history uh, to identify risks, medications, to identify diseases based on the medication the patient is taking, exams results uh, that can diagnose some conditions, history of comorbidities that shows previous conditions, um, also physical examinations, um, treatments and conductions, uh, hypotheses of diagnosis, diagnostics, and so on. But the problem is uh, these EHRs, these medical records, is written in free text in the most diverse ways. So we have a lot of ways to say the same thing. And sometimes a small change in the sentence could mean another different thing. And especially for Portuguese, that is a complex language with many verbal and language variations. Uh, so we need um, sometimes complex and uh, some combinations of models to understand what, why the, what the physician, the nurse of other staff in the hospital is want to say. Uh, an example of the problem analyzing those texts, and just to emphasize this, some of the clients, when we show the show the, the, our solution, show what we do, they some clients ask why they need this, why they can't not only make a query in the database or something like that to find those patients, and. Uh, here I bring some examples why this is not possible, why we need to understand the context of what is written and not just look for our specific word and uh, diagnose the patient based on that. Uh, here is one of the problems. There is negations of certain terms. The first example is the nine allergies and DM, diabetics, but the patient have uh, hypertension. The second one denies drug allergy and comorbidities such as hypertension and DM diabetics. In the second one, in the third one, sorry, is another example of denying and saying uh, things in such texts. So here 
they are denying GM diabetics, but affirming hypertension. And in the last one, it's saying that the mother has diabetes, but denying that the patient has. So if we don't understand the context and just looking for the word, we are not able to extract correctly this information. Uh, the second one, the second most common problem is punctuations. So here we have four sentences, almost similar, very similar actually, um, but that have different contexts, different meanings. The first one, the night allergies, comorbidities, diabetics. So here the patient have only diabetics. In the third one, they have his or her have nothing, has nothing. And the last one have only hypertension. The third one have only hypertension. The last one, they have nothing. Uh, this last one is from texts that mostly were written in a form format. <laughs> so this is why they have a, a different uh, format. Uh, the third common problem and the most difficult is when we have the same word meaning different things. That is very common in medical context, especially because they use a lot of abbreviations that have different meanings. So I didn't translate these examples because if I translate, we lose the, the meaning. But the first one is saying about diabetics in the first sentence, like a pathology. And the second one is actually, although is using DM, is for mediational drainage. That is a procedure and not the disease. So we need to understand the context that the word is be using to understand if it's a disease, if it's a procedure, a, a, a drug, a medication, or what it is. Um, our first attention to solve these problems and extract these information, we're using a QNA model. This way before the chat GPT and similar. Uh, we use a model based on the big bird, but with small uh, alterations and with the data set squared, but in Portuguese version. Additionally, with our own uh, questions uh, in medical context. Uh, the model worked okay, wasn't bad, but was not enough to use in production because we need to extract correct these information and identify the patients with the pathologies uh, to, uh, because it's, it's in health. So it's important that the correction is above some metric enough. So we don't send disease patients for home and we don't bring a lot of health patients to treatments. Um, our final solution uh, after long tests and uh, thinking and discussions is uh, a combine of a lot of models that we uh, apply in phases. So the first, first phase is the stretch sections. Uh, when we structure the, H, uh, the EHR in sections, and then we can know what the context of this part, of the context of this other part. The second phase is at, after these extractions, uh, we use these specific sections and extract uh, terms in these specific sections. For, for example, if we are talking about the medical history of a patient, if this is the section, then okay, we can use a model that we extract the uh, and a model with entry recognition to extract medications specifically in the section. So we uh, can improve the accuracy of the model. Uh, and after these extractions, we could we apply uh, another algorithm to treat the abbreviations, the negations, and other problems, small problems that we have. So now 
we know the diseases, the medications, the exams, the, all the other information about the patient. We combine this re these results from the same patient to have a history and a timeline of what is happening with this patient. So this is the first phase. We stretch the a a EHR uh, in sections. For this, we use a uh, naming recognition model called CRF. That is small, simpler, but very effective. So it's faster. We have a lot of text to process. So these were the most um, optimized model we found. And the most common sections in this text are the history, complaints, uh, comorbidities, uh, diagnosis, treatments, uh, and, and this. After we split those sections, as I said before, we use another mo a model of uh, name entity recognition, but this time a bit more powerful to extract the specific terms in this, in this section. So for this model, we use the BioBird PT, that is the Portuguese Clinical and Biomedical BART, uh, were created for PUC, that is a university in Sao Paulo. Actually, we base our model in this. We have, we did small changes and we train with our own data set. We have a large data set of EHRs with annotation. Uh, so here's an example of how we could uh, identify um, anemia, that is a disease. Here in the first one is a part, is a section that the patient is described with uh, the diseases, the findings, the history of the patient. So we run in there for diseases and find that the patient has iron decrement anemia. In the second part is the part of the treatment, the conduct. Uh, we run the model of medications and find the patient takes noripurum, that is a medication for anemia. And in the third part, in the part of exams, uh, we run the model for exams and find that one exam is above, is below actually, the value that should be for a normal, uh, a normal result. So the person also has anemia. Uh, and finally, after we extract, extract all this information, we apply another algorithms, more simpler, but very powerful to treat the other problems that I said before. The first one is a genetic algorithm to treat abbreviations. Uh, for the negation part, we use a part of speed recognition, and we also use a lot of regexes for uh, specific cases when it's faster and for terms that didn't change much. So uh, it's faster and more optimized to use a regex than to create a model specific for that. Um, our data, we have a lot of uh, HRs from our own data set that is uh, shared by, uh, by our partners. We have annotations in, the, in those data from our own um, doctors, physicians, or students, uh, so we can find these information. And uh, unfortunately, these annotations are actually expensive. And although we have a million of texts, mostly models were trained with about 20,000 samples. But they have, even though it's a smaller sample than the data we have, the results are very great and we keep with that. So speaking about the results, uh, our entire system is very fast, uh, not only because of the models, obviously, 
we have a team of developers that optimize the, the, the entire system. Um, we uh, code uh, deploys um, very, in a very specific, powerful, um, optimized way. And so our system is able to process 300,000 300, EHRs per day is uh, enough for us for now with the amount of clients we have. And all of our models present over 97% of accuracy. That is a great result. Uh, and especially because we combine information. So for instance, if I lose a medication for a patient, what is rare but can occur, uh, normally the patient have another information that will indicate for me that they have that disease. Or the same medication will appear in another text. So 97% is very enough for our models, models so far. Um, in our first trial, uh, real life trial, we selected randomly 300 patients identified with diabetics and our partners called for these patients and asked them if they have diabetics and check the information that we said. So for instance, uh, it's different uh, diabetics that takes metformina, that is a simpler medication from one that takes um, insulin, insulina, that is a complex medication. So we check with these informations and all the calls were 100% correct. So this is a, a very happy and excited result to share. Nowadays, we have uh, the solution is running in a lot of clients. And just in one client, a big hospital in Sao Paulo, we found that about 71,000 patients with plurimetabolic syndrome that is a syndrome where the patient have three or more uh, metabolic diseases, metabolic um, comorbidities, which is five times more the previous no amount of patients that the hospital know. So it's a great result again, and is the powerful information that is hidden in these kind of texts that the people didn't analyze enough before. And with this solution, the hospital were able to add by now at least part of those patients in prevention programs, improving patients' quality of life and reducing hospital costs. And so it's a win-win. The patient is, uh, is better, have a better quality of life, and the hospital is happy because they can reduce costs as well. Uh, for future works, we pretend to optimize the process even more because we have more clients, more text to process, and more diseases to identify. So uh, for this, mainly we want to decrease the number of models we run nowadays, uh, maybe ending with only one. And try the new state of art in NLP with these new uh, large language models that is available now and increase the number of diseases that we identified, which is uh, now around six or seven. Um, last but not least, uh, I'd like to acknowledge this amazing team that is the people of the Neuro Neuromed that they did most of the work, developers, data scientists, product people, and so on. And especially the NLP team, the, the persons who make and create the solution, and the med medical team that is responsible for the rules and the annotation text. And that's it. Thank you.